Right. Uh, so second to last session. Thank you all for sticking around. I also seem to have the dubious distinction of being the only guy in the suit. <laughs> oh, hey, Joel. Joel's one. Uh, or a tie. Maybe there's another. OK, cool. Yes, three, four. All right, so we're a minority still. No pun intended. Um, all right, so we've been doing some really cool stuff within uh, Milner Brown. I know where to stand here. Hopefully everybody can see me. And I'm going to share some of, the, some of the work that we've been doing over the last couple of years, uh, especially in the areas of mobile. So may, some of you may not know, and some of you may know that we brought together two entities, uh, Dynamic Logic and Mineral Brown together, uh, Dynamic Logic and Compete together to form Mineral Brown Digital. So we're covering both the behavioral side of things and then the effectiveness side of things into one uh, entity. So we're very, very excited about uh, where we're going and some of the insights that we're going to be uh, collaborating on uh, together. Uh, within mobile, we've been in this space for the past four and a half years or so, primarily within the ad effectiveness space, which is those little ads that you see on uh, mobile platforms or mobile devices, and to be able to measure those. Um, the data that I'm going to share with you has three buckets today. Okay, So the first <coughs> bucket is really around ad effectiveness, uh, which is, like I said, the area that we've been involved in the most over the last uh, four and a half years. We've done almost 450, 500 studies uh, over, these, over this time frame, everything from measuring uh, display advertising, mobile display advertising, to uh, mobile video, uh, SMS, uh, location-based marketing, uh, it, all, all basically the entire gamut that the entire mobile ecosystem offers. Um, ma majority of the database uh, is on the, uh, s the smaller uh, mobile banner ads. The second bit that we've uh, recently launched uh, with our uh, legacy Compete folks, now Mill Brown Digital, is a behavioral panel. These are folks where, similar to the online space, we have installed meters on uh, people's uh, uh, mobile phones in the US. Um, and we are monitoring pretty much everything uh, that they're doing on, on the phones. These are, these are obviously opt-in. Uh, and we can derive some very interesting insights out of those. So that's another cell that we are constantly uh, going to be evolving over the next uh, year or so. The third bit is kind of primary research that we do, which is more survey-based, using online surveys to understand what people are saying and, and, um, and, and doing. So those are the three big buckets that I'll be sharing data from today. Uh, OK. Mobile. So who thought 2013 was going to be the year of mobile? Come on. Not even one? Really? No? OK. We thought. There, there you go. Peter. Perfect. ARF. Um, it still is not. It still isn't. And I don't, we don't think it's going to be potentially by uh, next year. Maybe by the end of next year, it's going to be. Uh, there's more hype right now around uh, mobile marketing than there are actually sort of um, opportunities. and. Um, Mobile, as, as, as a, a, the value as a marketing medium is really highest at certain touch points, not all touch points. And I think we want to clarify that uh, based on all the work that we're seeing. Um, this is some survey information uh, that, that we did over, uh, over a survey we did uh, last year, which was trying to understand how people's shopping habits uh, are different than uh, people's shopping habits on uh, PC versus mobile. A majority, and this has been discussed all throughout the day, and this is certainly shouldn't be new news, which is, on mobile, uh, they're much more transactional in nature. They're really looking for store information, comparing prices, reviewing product descriptions, uh, more so than uh, PC, which is around more research and consideration. So in PC, people have in their home, it's kind of a more of a sort of lean back type of medium, uh, which is interesting, because uh, we always used to say that PC was a lean forward medium compared to uh, TV, a little bit different uh, compared to t uh, mobile uh, now. And in PC, people are researching, sitting at home, uh, and then on, on the go, they're using their mobile devices to be able to do uh, these types of things. Uh, as this is some data from our behavioral panel. What are they doing? What are people doing um, And what, uh, it, throughout the week? Uh, the mobile activity really indexes higher on the weekends compared to the, the weekdays, which makes sense. Uh, you are, uh, especially when it comes to retail, uh, you're on your couch. Um, and uh, you know you kind of don't want to open op open up your laptop, your baby watching TV, and you kind of want to browse and see what's up there. So for marketers, really good opportunities to offer interesting deals or coupons, which tends to be the big thing within mobile as far as retail is concerned, on the weekends and then obviously overnight hours. So evening, overnight, and uh, early AM. 
love to be the guy that is uh, buying stuff at four in the morning on their mobile device. Um, as far as smartphone versus tablet uh, behavior is concerned, um, we find that there, there are certain differences for smartphones. It's really, there's no one particular area that stands out. Uh, people are using their smartphones everywhere. They're using them at home. They're using them in the store. They're using them uh, waiting, commuting. But tablet, not so much. Tablet, um, most of the time, most tablets are only Wi-Fi enabled, so they are limited within a certain <coughs> radius of that Wi-Fi, which tends to be uh, in the home, generally. Uh, it, an opportunity here for marketers, and this is, this is often missed, which is majority of the mobile advertising uh, or the ads that are put out there are ten tends to be the same for smartphones and tablets, not anything different. But clearly, c people are consuming content differently. So it's important to know, and it's important for us, to, and we keep stressing this, is uh, do not repurpose your smartphone advertising on tablet. Yes, you could. But people are in a different mindset to be able to using both their tablet and their smartphone. This is, again, data from some of our mobile panel, um, behavioral panel, uh, as far as uh, PC versus mobile uh, shopping habits. M and this has been discussed uh, throughout the day uh, uh, as well. But some, uh, another data point that supports it, uh, this, is what, this is how people are different, mobile, peop mobile folks versus online folks. Uh, more health conscious, uh, tech enthusiasts, <coughs> football enthusiasts, I love that. Uh, theater enthusiasts, movie enthusiasts, music enthusiasts. They tend to be uh, indexing higher on pretty much everything, except for categories like news and weather and finance and navigation and things like that. Uh, for that, they tend to have very similar behaviors, but for, for all of these categories, very, very interesting things you could start to do and target these folks. So what, is, what, is, what has been the advertising impact of, uh, of mobile versus online? Uh, these are basically our norms. These, this is, these are deltas, uh, control versus exposed. When somebody is shown an ad online, uh, what is the average impact that they were going to see on any of these five brand metrics? So on mobile, um, if you are a brand and you're putting an ad uh, on a mobile platform, uh, network, um, pl publisher, uh, you will probably see a five point increase in aided brand awareness. Okay, uh, 15 point increase in um, ad awareness, 10 point increase in message association, and so on and so forth. Uh, and the norms on the right represent uh, what we've done in the, in the online space. And you'll see mobile tends to outperform online. Why is that the case? Well, there's a couple of factors. Okay, uh, the first one, it's quite simple. There's only so many things you can fit on that mobile uh, screen, right? So by the nature of the screen itself, there is a, there's, a, there's, a, there's just a natural consideration or constraint to, um, to what can fit on the screen as, and there's less clutter. So the size of the mobile ad compared to the screen is actually quite important. And as a result of it, people notice it more. Um, the second, it's actually quite simple as well, uh, which is create, from a creative perspective, there's only so many messages you can put out on that mobile um, small mobile banner. Generally, not more than two. And I'll, talk, I'll get more prescriptive uh, towards the end of, the, uh, the, end of the, the presentation. But because of that, because of this kind of really focused space, you're limited by what you can say. And as a result of it, most <coughs> mobile advertising tends to be better than what we see in the online space, especially. Uh, the third is this concept, and we see this play out, especially in the mobile apps space, is a consumer acceptance of mobile advertising, right? Uh, in the app space, there's kind of a natural tendency, and this is the way we've trained the consumers. Download this game, you'll get it for free, but you'll have to watch some advertising or pay attention to some advertising. You may not be paying attention, but certainly there's gonna be some advertising. And as a result of it, within mobile, um, there's kind of a natural acceptance of that. And f for the most part, this was true, but things are kind of changing, and I'll talk about why that's the case, because cons consumers are getting smarter. Um, and finally, there's better targeting. Mobile is just simply better targeted for many, many reasons. There's carrier data, there's location data, uh, there's other data points that uh, publishers and platforms are using, uh, and most of the campaigns that we measure appear to be better targeted than online, uh, sometimes on a factor <coughs> of two. 
which is very, very interesting. But like I said to you, things are changing. This is a chart representing those mobile deltas over time. Lots of academics here, lots of uh, research scientists here, so don't pay attention to the base sizes at the bottom because uh, we're still ramping up. But if you look at the deltas from 2008, you know, uh, a, a, always a leading indicator for effectiveness of a platform is always, always mobile ad awareness. That went from 23 point uh, increase to um, it's stabilizing at about 12, uh, between 10 and, 10 and 12 or so over the last two years. And that's, there's a number of reasons for that. Early on, the, there wasn't that much advertising in general since 2008. Uh, two, uh, there wasn't that much bad advertising. I can't tell you how many ads that we see that we, go, that we are testing that are just simply awful. Uh, and that's, you know, and th those are, that's one of the reasons why we work with the IAB to, re to release a mobile manifesto, creative manifesto, to be able to kind of help alleviate that. But you will see some of these metrics are trending down, and that always happens. The medium is new, <coughs> and anytime there's a new medium, uh, the metrics are always speaking. We saw the same thing happen for online. We saw the same thing happen for online video. And we're saying, seeing the same thing happen with mobile. They're still very, very high, but, uh, but uh, really regressing back to the mean. Um, this is kind of interesting. So this is basically uh, an analysis that shows you um, the best mobile performance in terms of kind of us segmenting the database compared to the worst mobile performance. Uh, you'll see there's, if over the last three years or so, the story that we've been telling was actually quite interesting, which was even if you got the targeting wrong, even if you put too many messages in your ads, even if you, uh, your brand was, uh, you know, just uh, your creative was just awful. Uh, you could, you were going to see a positive uh, increase in uh, these deltas, but that's changed now. The medium has matured, and if you get any of those three or the four or five buckets that I talked about wrong um, or consistently wrong, over time you may be harming your brand. So the time of experimentation, people are still experimenting, but it's you you ha you want to be careful. Um, this went by faster than I thought. Um, this is the mobile manifesto that we launched with the IAB, uh, some research that we did, uh, and we launched that at CAN uh, this year. And uh, the way it was set up is this is data based on uh, all of the work that we've done in the mobile ad effectiveness space, uh, really looking deeper into the data set and segmenting it even more. The second bit was some qual work that we did where we took those results and showed them to uh, folks that were judging CAN you know, creative, uh, creative directors at uh, top agencies and tried to understand what, you know, what they thought of those, uh, of these, uh, of these ads and these, uh, some of these creative best practices we put together. And there were four buckets that we feel, uh, you know, advertisers uh, need to accomplish to be able to secure the deltas they want. Uh, the first one um, is clear and persistent branding. And there's some more prescriptive things on the left, which is you should have a full logo in every frame of um, the ad. Most of the time, the ad or the logos are cut off. Uh, if you've got, uh, especially in the auto space, you've got a parent brand and you've got like the model itself and you can barely see the headlights of the car. Some people are really good with that, but on a small screen, it's very hard to understand what the uh, ad is for. So importantly and in inter inter interestingly, uh, it's important to have clear and persistent branding. The second bit is um, uh, have a use a color palette that pops. You know, um, use no more than two bright colors. Okay, this is getting super prescri prescriptive. Um, and it's also sometimes very hard to read an ad against a dark background. So on the network space, a little bit hard to accomplish because uh, you know, there are so many different publishers your ad could be go going to. But if you're doing a larger buy within a publisher, uh, you may want to pay attention to you know, the kind of the, the actual uh, way that the ad is laid out. Um, Third bit is short and focused messaging. S straightforward, don't use more than two messages. And we've done this work within Milner Brown um, a lot, which is even in television, if you have more than two messages in a TV ad, the ability, to, ability for each of those messages, if you have more than two, the ability of each incremental message to convey what it's supposed to convey goes down. Same thing with mobile. Um, generally, just one message seems to work fine. And text should not take up more than 50% of the layout. 
So this is again measuring thousands and thousands of ads on mobile over the last uh, four or five years, and we see these to be consistently true. The fourth bucket is an interesting one, and I think that's something we're still playing wrong with, uh, which is uh, consumers really respond to mobile ads and give them something back, which is uh, generally, and there's a kind of a tangible value exchange, right? So in the app space, it's actually quite straightforward, which is I'll, play, I'll download a game and I'll play the game because it's free, uh, and I'll watch some ads, but in, the general, but in the general environment, that needs to be tangible in terms of uh, couponing, or uh, more interactive elements while social, in, uh, social integration or uh, doing something more interesting. So hope that's, that's me.